this and we're going to put it on Facebook just in case that's the best way for people. All right. Oh gosh, I guess maybe we're not going to put it on Facebook. That's okay. All right. So welcome friends. I'm going to start with uh, David West is playing um, via video. Right now he's actually playing at this twice at the same time because he's out playing to his neighbors right now and he'll be right back. But I will start with um, I will start with a little video that he sent me. I will do that by taking over your screen. So get excited. Blessed are the ones who make peace. Blessed are the ones who scrape by. Blessed are, are the ones living holy lives. Here's to the rest of us who try. So Katie asked me if I had any songs about gathering, <clears throat> about breaking bread together, food. I frankly had nothing. This one is about getting together, but it's in a heteronormative sexual way. I've sung it for you before, or for the community before. Jesus shaves, joins corporate America, gets laid off, he grows his beard back, stays up late, sees a TV commercial about being a welder, he makes a phone call. Jesus shaves, he goes on an interview. He does real well, he's got a way with people. Two years on, he's still an apprentice, but not for long now, it's graduation. Jesus shades, puts his best suit on, gets a certificate, he makes it official. Now he's a welder, and he wears a big helmet, twice a week now. Jesus shades. Blessed are the ones who make peace. Blessed are the ones who scrape by. Blessed are the ones living holy lives. Here's to the rest of us who try. Jesus shades on Sunday morning. Decides to go fishing, going to church. It's winter time. He walks on the water, digs a hole in the ice, he fishes for perch. Jesus shaves, the scales off the fishes, it's a couple of fillets and a couple of brewskis. He thinks about the girl, Magdalena in payroll, decides he's going to ask her out for dinner. Jesus shaves for work on Monday goes to the office, he gathers his courage. He's still not sure how he's gonna ask her. Walks over to her desk, sees a picture of a boyfriend. Blessed are the ones who make peace. Blessed are the ones who scrape by. Blessed are the ones living holy life. Here's to the rest of us who try. She says hello. How are you this morning? He asks if she knows it'll snow or rain. She notices him looking at the picture on her desktop. She says it's her cousin who passed away. He says that's great. She looks at him funny. He says I didn't mean that. She says it's okay. And then she smiles, and they both start laughing. That's when he knows it's his lucky day. Jesus shaves, 
smiling in the mirror. Magdalena saying, they got to hurry. They'll be late for work, and the school bus is coming. But the daughter likes watching as Jesus shaves. Blessed are the ones who make peace. Blessed are the ones who scrape by. Blessed are the ones living holy lives. Here's to the rest of us who try. Here's to the rest of us who try. All right. That's great. We're grateful for David West and his all his glory. Good job, David. He's here right now. Oh, looks like my, uh, <laughs> looks like my, one second, my video is still playing. There we go. We don't need more of David right now. We can get more of David later and that's just fine. So welcome again, friends. Uh, we'll just do kind of a short meditation um uh where so i'm you know i won't keep you here super long or anything but i found there's this theological thing online called infleshed which is a feminist theology reading type thing uh, and my friend posted the other day a sort of take on the mary oliver poem wild geese um but it's this woman named Adri Cusero, and it's Mary Oliver for Corona Times After Wild Geese by Adri Cusero. So here's a reading for today. You do not have to become totally Zen. You do not have to use this isolation to make your marriage better, your body slimmer, your children more creative. You do not have to maximize its benefits by using this time to work even more, write the best-selling Corona Diaries, or preach the gospel of Zoom. You only have to let the soft animal of your body unlearn everything capitalism has taught you, that you are nothing if not productive, that consumption equals happiness, that the most important unit is the single self that you are at your best when you resemble an efficient machine. Tell me about your fictions, the ones you've been sold, the ones you sheepishly sell others, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world as we know it is crumbling. Meanwhile, the virus is moving over the hills, suburbs, cities, farms, and trailer parks. Meanwhile, the news barks at you, harsh and addicting, until the push of the remote leaves a dead quiet behind, a loneliness that hums as the heart anchors. Meanwhile, a new paradigm is composing itself in our minds, could birth at any moment if we clear some space from the same tired hegemonies. Remember, you are allowed to be still as the white birch, stunned by what you see uselessly shedding your coils of paper skins because it gives you something to do. Meanwhile, on top of everything else you are facing, do not let capitalism co-opt this moment, laying its whistles and train tracks across your weary heart. Even if your life looks nothing like the Sabbath, your stress boa constricting your chest, know that your antsy kids, your terror, your shifting moods, are no less sacred than a yoga class. Whoever you are, no matter how broken, the world still has a place for you, calls to you over and over, announcing your place as legitimate, as forgiven, even if you fail and fail and fail again. Remind yourself over and over all the swells and storms that run through your long, tired body they all have their place here, now in this world. It is your birthright that you be held deeply, warmly in the family of things, not one cell left in the cold. So again, that is Mary Oliver for Corona times after wild geese. 
we have a scripture today um and this some some people maybe just checking this out tuning in because you don't really have much else to do right now none of us have an excuse to not do anything we're invited to right now because don't have to well some people are working but many of us are not so Monday thursday is Monday's kind of a weird word um and what it what this the story of the thursday night before good friday before the night that jesus is betrayed and killed by his friends this is the night where he gathers with his friends and he has the last supper uh, it's also the night where he gathers with his friends and says a whole bunch of really cool things i highly recommend you check out this section in the book of john i remember being a nerdy little uh my spiritual nerdy little self as a teenager and for some reason i was maybe i wasn't a teenager maybe i was in college i was flying somewhere so probably in college and it was a night evening flight and i had my bible with me because that's what i did and uh, i remember coming upon this section in john it's just jesus talking to his disciples before he's arrested and it's sort of this last hurrah and it feels like maybe like the last night at summer camp before everyone goes home or your last night at uh, your, you know, during your time at college, like graduation night or something where everyone's gathered together and it has that feeling of that really sacred last time moment. And I love um, that whole section. So if you, if you uh, want to check that out, you can head towards the end of John, like John 13 through 16. It's a couple chapters, so it's a little long to read right now. So we'll flip to the shorter version, Matthew, and uh, this is the section on the Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad. They began to say to, to him one after the other, surely not I, Lord. And Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and I got some props. So Jesus took bread. I'm not going to be able to break it probably. When he had given thanks for it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Then he took a cup. This was a gift from one of my churches, this communion cup. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you again in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So we'll have another little moment of song. Um, I'm going to replay. If if you were here uh, the other day, then you saw this song. Um, we're going to play Janet's song again, and I'm going to make sure that the words are on the side of it so that you can follow along on the chorus if you like. Um, it's the Marty Haugen song. He's a, a Lutheran in this area. Um, we're talking about a couple different meditative song communities today. Um, Marty Haugen does a lot of leadership in the Holden community, um, which is the, um, 
uh, there's, it's a lot of people in like Seattle in the Washington area. Um, and then there's the Taizé community, which I've talked about many times. It's a community in France. This necklace is from them. There's a little, like a sort of dove cross shape. So we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about the Taizé community because we're going to do a Taizé song today as well. But I'm going to take over your screen again. All right, so I should have the, you should be able to see the words to the right. Otherwise, um, you can, you should be able to follow along pretty well. Doing Lenten music at that time, and, and Riley has said, this is the Lentiest Lent ever. And um, this is a song by a guy named Marty Haugen. Um, as my 87-year-old neighbor, Dorothy, would say, he's one of our own, you know, because Marty lives in Minnesota, of all places. And um, when I was living in Chicago in the 1980s, he was, and still is, a great musician of the church, along with the St. Louis Jesuits, who uh, this past fall celebrated their 45th anniversary concert as they retired. So, um, so... Marty has been around for a long time. This is a song called Tree of Life. There's a part for me and there's a part for the congregation. Um, I sent a photograph along of the words. Hopefully you will be able to um, see the words um, on the photograph, um, hopefully at the Walker Church website. Hopefully that will happen. We'll see. But anyway, um, here it goes. And it's called Tree of Life. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. You can sing around with me if you have another person that you're um, isolating with at home. Perhaps you will have two or three different parts of the round. So it goes like this. Take Christ, take 
So I, I today have not been feeling particularly well. I think, who knows, I could have COVID, hopefully not. Um, I also know that every year on Monday, Thursday, I feel off. Uh, it's something about this time of year. And um, I know it because I'm often preaching on Monday, Thursday. As the associate pastor at my last church, I was often preaching. And, um, and often would have like a panic attack sometime during the day, <laughs> which if you struggle with mental health, you can laugh with me. <laughs> it's like, it's so ridiculous. Like there's nothing wrong with me per se. Um, but because it's a very busy week for me where we have a lot of services, it would make sense that I would get freaked out sometimes and get anxious. But it also, because it's a certain holiday where there's, it's got a lot of strong memories I remember, and every year I remember, last year I had a panic attack, and this year I'm having a panic attack. Um, there's lots of reasons to have panic attacks this year with <laughs> corona, and then when you wake up not feeling great, it's easy to feel, blame corona for everything. Um, and I was, uh, I was blessed today by my aunt. One of my aunts lives in the Phillips neighborhood, and I went and brought her some gluten-free flour that I had accidentally bought since everyone else was out of flour. And in exchange, she ran back into her house and her oven timer had just gone off and she made an apple fritter. So my, my one outing of the day was rewarded with a fresh apple fritter, which was super wonderful. But the reason I had thought about my aunt today was because uh, I had gotten an email from her 
and she's been taking lots of Swedish lessons at the Swedish Institute. And so she's been, it's a good way for her to, instead of dealing with anxiety, she puts her, instead of worrying in her brain, like getting all those little worry thoughts, she's focusing on learning Swedish. And that keeps her brain occupied in these stressful times. So in the email, she was giving me a list of the ways she's staying sane. Learning Swedish is one of them. And she loves that I, she is a big believer in the, the ideas of liminal spaces, thin places, the same of what we talk about a lot. And so she said, you know, there's a thin place coming up this weekend. And maybe you already felt that with the bright pink harvest moon or bright pink super moon that happened the other night. That was really delicious and wonderful. So the full moon season happening, my friend texted me and was like, is that why my son wouldn't go to sleep? We have that, that, uh, the epic moon happening. We have the sense of spring and turning happening. And then we have Easter. And I wouldn't have originally thought of uh, this as a thin, a thin space in sort of a geological sense or a spiritual sense. But my aunt mentioned the, uh, that in Sweden, they have um, what's called Easter Eve. Um, I translated this whole thing. To, oh, Paskaften. Pasca, because Glad Pask is Happy Easter in Swedish. So it's Paskaften is the Easter Eve. So I was looking up uh, some information a little bit about, about what that is, is what exactly, why she was talking about it as a thin place and what is this Easter Eve. So I'll tell you a little about it. In Sweden, Easter traditionally begins on Easter Eve the day before Jesus' resurrection. So essentially Saturday. Easter, uh, e Easter week begins with still week or dusk week, which I think are cool ways of calling it, of calling Holy Week, a period paying attention to Jesus' suffering. Uh, for example, in Sweden, it was not appropriate to hold parties or weddings. They had uh, the church's bell, like bell iron, um, the flap was replaced with a wooden flap uh, so, so that their bell wouldn't make any noise during this still week, this holy week. So the sound became dull. This holy Thursday date in Sweden, as, as is here, has become the start of the Easter weekend. But in pre-industrial society, it was imagined in Sweden that the witches began the journey to Blakula, a journey that was considered to start at the church's belfry. The witches were protected by drawing crosses and other signs on barn doors. In some places, Easter fires were lit to chase away all evil, often accompanied by rifle shots. The latter has a parallel in today's Easter cracker ceremonies, which I'm guessing is like fireworks, probably. On Maundy Thursday, in many parts of Sweden, you can meet Easter eaters, which are witch-dressed children. Easter treats can also be found on Easter Eve. And then on the Friday, there's a strong emphasis on grief and healing, often in black clothes. So in Sweden tonight, it seems like it'll basically be Halloween, another sort of thin place turning moment, All Hallows Eve. There will be children dressing up as witches and going door to door asking for Easter candy. So if you are also feeling a little riled up on these Holy Week weekends, uh, whether or not you are rooted in the Christian tradition, there is a lot that is happening, a lot in the air, specifically, even more than just our, even more than just the coronavirus being all up in the air. We also have a lot of um, move, a lot of moving and turning going on. So I'm hoping that this weekend you will take extra good care of yourself, that you will sit whenever you are sitting around a table and eating, whether it's just with yourself uh, or whether it's with the people you are co-quarantining with. Um, I hope that you will think of all the people, uh, including Jesus, but all the people who are giving their bodies for you right now or who have historically think about 
your parents and how much they gave and sacrificed or the people who raised you, grandmothers, uncles, aunts. I want us to be meditating on and thinking about those who are putting their lives on the front lines right now, those who are working uh, as grocery store employees, those who are working as custodians, those who are working at, uh, as cashiers, those who are nurses and in the medical world trying to care for people. Though whether you're breaking physical bread yourself this weekend or whether you're eating pasta or whether you're eating beans out of a can that um, remember that as you're be mindful as you eat that there's people who have given everything so that you can eat and be fed and be well we also remember when we sit at a table that we don't sit alone at a table remember that even if your table is full just with people who are on your digital screen for the most part maybe you need to uh, put some little pictures around you to remember that you're not sitting and eating alone, that you're not alone, but make sure at some point to try and sit in some sort of table formation and remember that you belong to a community where all of us are interwoven and interconnected, that we, uh, we sit around a table just like Jesus was sitting around a table with his 12 friends, leaning back, drinking wine or drinking whatever it is that you drink in the evenings, what is your practice? What is your tradition? Another big story and something that we should remember is that the, in the, on this Monday, Thursday night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Now, right now, we're particularly trying to be very hygienic and not uh, doing pretty much anything with each other. But I'm particularly aware this in this Holy Week weekend, especially since my self is feeling so wonky and out of place, I'm remembering and knowing that you, like me, are often people who are first to help rather than ask for help. We are, perhaps, it's much more challenging for some of us to have our own feet washed rather than just jump in and wash other people's feet. So this weekend, I invite you to what, do whatever it is that maybe it is physically washing your feet. If you've ever done yoga practice or done some stretching with your socks off or ever just rubbed coconut oil on your feet, and it can feel like a really intimate act to touch your feet, to care for and think about and feel these kind of ugly, strange parts of us that often have bunions and corns and kind of look weird, um, but they sustain us and they hold us up every day, all the time, and they deserve as much tenderness and care as we can give them. Often we have the urge, that little burning urge that we see something and we just want to help help it and give, get it out and serve, and that's our first instinct. I know that um, my aunt gave me a lecture about that, was telling me how how maybe we can sit instead of immediately trying to turn to other people. What does it mean to just sit sit with the feeling you have for a second and not necessarily give that feeling away immediately. And I was immediately challenged by that notion when I went for a run or, or a walk yesterday around uh, Lake Cedar. And I immediately saw someone's cre two credit cards on the ground. And, and, a, and I, my immediate urge was, I need to pick these up. I need to find that person. I need to help them. And instead, I just sort of stood there and stared at them and just thought, you know, I can't help everybody. I can't save everybody. I really don't need to be having a close interaction with someone and their credit cards right now. And I can feel sad for them, and I have to carry that sadness right now. Um, so I hope that maybe you'll find and pay attention to those urges, to those, those times when you're reading the news and you wish you could help other people, to turn that inward and say, how can I hold that? What can I do with that grief and that care? What can I do to um, turn that back towards myself for a moment and nurture myself so that when the time is right, that I'm even stronger and better able to serve the people that I'm able to help? How can I practice washing my own feet in this corona season? As you wash your hands thoroughly, maybe uh, you remember that you're not just taking care of other people, you're also caring deeply for yourself 
as you wash your hands and feet in this season. And maybe it's easy for you because you're like me and if you're feeling best and safest in bed and in the shower right now. So I'm taking lots of showers right now. It's very soothing. The one place where I feel like I can touch my safe face completely safely. So we're going to take another um, moment of quiet. I mentioned the Taizé community before, and I will again. There are lots of good songs. I, I Something that's been helping me on my kind of bummer day today has been listening to Taizé music. It's soothing. It's meditative. The liturgy is one you can just sing over and over and over again, similar to the song that Janet was just singing for us. So the the um, when I was in Taizé, this was a song I really enjoyed. Uh, the French words, and you can, there a lot of the versions are in French. A lot of the Taizé songs are written in multiple different languages, many of them in French because um, Jacques Bartier, who wrote many of them, is French. But uh, they often translate them and try to make them singable in different languages. So it's called Dans nos obscurité, which is, um, and it means within our darkest night. Within our darkest night, you kindle a fire that never dies away, never dies away. So I invite you, if you do have um, a candle with you, or maybe you have a cracker to eat to remember that communion night, maybe you want to just start rubbing coconut oil on your feet, these are my invitations. Find a candle, a cracker, coconut oil, or nothing if you like, if you want to just sit and sing and meditate. But I'll take over your screen uh, another time and we'll, we'll sing and meditate on this together.
So I'm curious, I'm gonna, um, get, oh, that's beautiful candle, Sheriff. I'm gonna give you the opportunity if you would, if you would like to unmute if anyone has a way. I'm just curious in this season, in this weekend where this holy weekend, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, in this season of coronavirus practice where maybe you have lots of time to sit in grief or sit and meditate or um, get kind of in touch with your sense of spirituality. I'm curious if anyone has a practice that they're going to commit to this weekend or a practice that's helpful and regular for them. Um, so I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself if anyone wants to share. And no pressure. I meditate every morning and then I join the meditation group and meditate with them. What does meditation look like for you, Nancy? I sit in a chair with my feet on the floor wearing slippers instead of shoes. And I watch my breathing in minute detail and my thoughts wander away and then I come back to my breath. Thank you. I love it, especially the slipper detail. That's important. No need for real shoes in meditation. Any other practices? I've been finding um, that that uh, ritual and um, um, just a regimen, I guess, has been really, really important for me. Um, I've been doing a lot. My life is much more structured. Um, it seems like in isolation than it, than it was when I was working. Um, I just feel a real need. Uh, the first thing I try to do when I wake up in the morning is water and then walk. Um, so that's, that has um, been sort of just before I try and really accomplish anything else is have some water and take a walk and usually just a 10 minute walk, but I'm, I'm finding that's a really good way to start. And then I, th I think I mentioned to some of you, I've been, I've been playing on my front step stoop every night at seven o'clock. There were 24 people out there. It was almost dangerous. <laughs> there were, there were just so many children and stuff. And uh, it was a bitter cold night, but um, it was crazy. And that's, that's the most, that's the most we've had. So um, th that's really been helpful. I've never been more connected to my neighbors. Uh, you know, exchanging uh, texts and um, getting email addresses and um, kind of letting them know, uh, you know, that I'm, what I'm going to sing so they can Google the lyrics and sing along from their doorsteps. I mean, it's been really, um, it's been really uh, gratifying and it's, it's kept my panic at bay. I've had, I've had a lot of, of uh, fear in panic. And I'm not so much afraid of getting sick. I certainly don't want to get sick, but I haven't been afraid of getting sick. I've just been horrified at what's happening in other communities. Horrified. It's just horrifying. So, um, and I, it's, it's really easy to, uh, to dwell too long on, on that. If you, if you're like me, my job right now is all around this computer. That's how I connect with my students. That's what, that's how I work. And it's so easy to, to uh, get sucked into newspaper stories and news accounts. So I need, um, I need the uh, regimen of um, walking and singing and drinking water. And you guys, I've been, I've been, I've been going to, I've been going to more church than I ever did back, uh, you know, when I was free. <laughs> See, we have no excuses now. Anyone else? Yeah, um, there was a, 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 wint a winter into early summer uh, in the late 70s when I lived in the mountains of New Mexico that it was the first time in my life I had found the silence that I had innately thirsted for. Um, I was in a log cabin 
heating with wood that I collected and split and stacked and hauled and burnt. Um, I heated my bath water and laundry water that I hauled up from the creek head where a, a, an artesian presented out of the side of the mountain. And for, you know, there was no TV in this mountain valley at 9,000 feet. There was, there was very little radio um, late night, maybe after 10, 30, 11, well, there was, it was mountain time. So it would have been, been a little bit earlier. You could, you, maybe you could get KAAY out of, out of Arkansas or KOMA out of Oklahoma, but gosh, there, there, you know, I, I just didn't have a radio after a while because it just didn't serve any purpose. And, <laughs> and I went for a period of two weeks at a time not hearing another human voice. I was caring for the horses and making sure they got fed and watered and, and doing work on the buildings and snowshoeing about. And, you know, it was 96 inches of snow that, that came down that, that winter. And, um, and I was astonished when the camp got going again and the first counselors arrived just how frenetic they seemed so i find i am just sitting huh just sitting and and time passes i have actually invented a time machine <laughs> And I'm sitting at it. <laughs> so. Wonderful. Thank you, Al. Well, thank you for sharing your practices. I was going to say, um, something I find um, meditative is jigsaw puzzle. And I've always contained myself to 500 pieces because I've never felt patient enough or that I could accomplish more. But now I'm doing a thousand piece puzzle. And because things are moving so slowly, time is just slow more than my already slow life <laughs> i'm things are meditation it's just moving in in this time i've enjoyed it a lot and and i think about the world a lot and then i go into a crazy jag of reading the news or facebook and i I almost have to just like physically draw my hand away from looking at the news and then I do it again and then I do it and I do it again and I'm thinking about people in the world and then I'm trying not to think about people in the world and um, yeah that's it nothing grand but what I'm doing you have a bird in there? Two birds over there. And then I've been throwing the rag toy for the dog. And then the cat comes in. We've been minding the animals. And then the dog's eating with a chair right now. And I have to pull him away. And then play with this to get his attention away from chewing the Ikea furniture chair. Mmm. Stop it. You've got a zoo in there. You've got a zoo, yeah. You've got a zoo. I like the bird chirp noises. Yeah. And I've been enjoying Howard's enjoyment of this time. He's been playing a lot of music and posting it on YouTube. I accompanied him on one song. And um, 
he's working right now. So you have to send me the link. Yes. It's like Howard Crans something. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, anyone else? All right, well, we've got one more fun surprise for you, and that is, I know a lot of you have been thinking about, uh, thinking about John Prine passing away. And um, David, yeah. West has, David West has one more special song for you. Uh, so I will take that over and then we will um, hand out, let's see. Which one are you there, Mary? We got to mute you so that we don't. Oh, hear sorry. It's all good. Just so we can hear David nice and clear. All right. I've been thinking lately about the people I meet The car wash on the corner and the hole in the street The way my ankles hurt, the shoes on my feet And I wonder if I'm gonna see tomorrow Father, forgive us for what we must do You forgive us and we'll forgive you We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue And we'll whistle and go fishing up in heaven I was in the army, but I never dug a trench. I used to bust my knuckles on a monkey wrench. I'd go to town, buy the girls a drink, but I don't think they ever even noticed me. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue, and we'll whistle and we'll fish up in heaven. A whistle and a fish, a whistle and a fish. Eat everything they put on your dish. And when we get through, we'll make a big wish and never have to do this again, again. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue and we'll whistle and go fishing up in heaven. On my very first job, I said thank you and please. Maybe scrub a parking lot on my knees. Then I got fired from being scared of bees, and they only gave me 50 cents an hour. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue, and we'll whistle and go fishing up in heaven. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue, and we'll whistle and go fishing up in heaven. Good job to the David family band. All right. Well, peace and power be with all of you. May you be blessed on this sacred glad Pasch weekend. Um, tomorrow at noon, we'll be having a watch party on the Walker Facebook page of the, um, the conference's Good Friday service. Well, there's also plenty of other Methodist churches who will be streaming if, if you're curious about that. But if you want to join me in watching that and see what they come up with and see what they're cooking, or you could just stream a bunch of uh, David and Howard videos if that's your preference. But I hope that you find some time of peace and care uh, and that you know that you have a place at the table and a place in the circle. So namaste, peace be with you, and amen. Thanks for joining us tonight, friends. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you so much. Love you all. Awesome. Hi. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe. Bye, birdies. Hugs, bye -bye, everyone. Birdies. Hugs to all of you. Hugs to you too, Al. <laughs>